Hi there, folks. Welcome to the drink making portion of tonight's event brought to you by Three of Strong Spirits. My name is Rachel. I'm the lead bartender here at Three of Strong, and I will be guiding you through tonight's drink making adventure where we will be making the Bird of Paradise cocktail. Uh, it's a little bit of a reimagination, uh, floral reimagination for this event of the Jungle Bird cocktail. So, first off, I'd like to thank uh, Spurwing for having us here. Um, community is a very big part of who we are at Three of Strong, and we can't imagine any anything better than celebrating people who do so much in support of our community. So thank you. To give you a little bit of a background on who we are at Three of Strong, um, we are primarily a rum distillery um, in East Bayside in Portland. We opened up in 2019, um, so we've had an exciting first couple of years. Uh, we're exciting to get back to serving some folks some drinks outside in our tasting room this summer. Um, one of the things we get a lot of questions about is our name and where it comes from. It's actually from an old uh, colonial punch recipe. It's a kind of rhyming recipe, a mnemonic device to help people remember, remember the recipe. One of sour, two of sweet, three of strong, four of weak. And those proportions are actually how we make most of our punches in-house today. Uh, one of the reasons uh, Sam and Dave, our owners, chose this as the inspiration for our name is because um, gathering around the punch bowl is all about community and coming together and celebrating and supporting people. So to break down that recipe a little bit, uh, the one of sour, lemon or lime juice, two of sweet, usually uh, sugar, simple syrup, um, some sort of sweeter fruit juice, three of strong, the spirits, usually rum, but very often gin or whiskey as well. And then four of weak being water, ice, tea, weaker fruit juices, anything to kind of help dilute and spread that cocktail and just like bring it all together. Um, we often add bitters and spice to ours because, you know, a little bit of spice makes everything nice. So um, one of the other questions we often get asked is, what is a rum? Like what makes rum different from gin or vodka or whiskey? Um, and the primary answer to that is what it is fermented and distilled from, which is sugar cane. So in order to be a rum, it has to be made from the sugar cane plant. It can't be from sugars derived from anything else. It has to be from sugar cane. But it can be the fresh cane juice, it can be the processed sugars, or it can be molasses, since all of those come from the sugar cane plant. Uh, the rum that we're gonna be using tonight is our Nightwater Dark Rum, and that is one of the rums that um, we make from molasses. So this starts out as 100% fancy grade organic molasses. Uh, spend some time fermenting and distilling and purifying before it's thrown into some new American oak barrels where it rests in ages for nine months till it's just absolute perfection. Um, and then we wash a little bit of molasses back in there to give it a little bit more of that color as well as those nice, nice deep um, roasty flavors that you get from this. So it's got a little bit of a lighter body. It's got some nice kind of like tannic structure from the oaks from the oak, as well as um, those nice, deep, roasty, chocolatey kind of coffee, uh, tobacco flavors. So the other spirits that we'll be using tonight are not our spirits. Um, Campari is a bitter aperitivo, Italian, Italian in origin. Um, and it's uh, one of the ingredients in the classic Jungle Bird cocktail, um, as well as a staple of a lot of classic cocktails. If you've ever had Negroni, Boulevardier, anything like that, um, you're gonna have had Campari. Um, of course, pineapple juice, um, classic in all TP drinks, um, and is also from the Jungle Bird. And the big coup for the, this drink is the Combiere Pamplemousse Rose Liqueur. So if you are making this drink at home and you want to make it a mocktail, there are some easy workarounds for this. Um, obviously, you can't have the rum, but if you do just like a little bit of molasses in there, that'll give you a little bit of that sweetness as well as a little bit of those deep roasty notes. Um, you can get um, rose water and mix it with grapefruit juice for to um, simulate, uh, simulate um, the pompamous rose. And then for the Campari, um, this one is a little bit more difficult. Um, there are two different options. Um, you can get um, a San bitter, which is kind of an Italian bittering agent Ita available at most Italian groceries. Um, and does a really good job of um, mimicking Campari. Um, but if you can't get to that because it's not available everywhere, um, you can just do a bitter um, black tea um, to get kind of those earthy, herbaceous, um, bitter notes that you would normally get from the Campari. So if you are at home making this cocktail and don't have the fancy dancy bar tools that I have, it's very understandable. And there are some very easy workarounds for that. 
Um, the two things that I usually tell people to have on hand that they're going to be measuring without um, bar tools is a quarter cup and a tablespoon. A quarter cup is going to be equal to two ounces, which we don't, actually don't need for this recipe. Um, and the tablespoon is going to be half an ounce. If you have an eighth of a cup or if you have a half a tablespoon, those can come in handy, but you can kind of eyeball it for the most part since you're just making it for yourself. Tins are a kind of harder thing to replace. Um, one of the things that I've seen frequently is people using two glasses and sticking them together. That works, but only if you can create that nice seal in there. Um, because if you don't get that nice seal, then you're just going to have liquid flying everywhere, which is never fun. Um, and also there's the possibility of breakage, which is also never fun. Um, so my favorite home hack for uh, mixing cocktails is a mason jar or just, you know, an old thing of Alfredo sauce, an old jar of Alfredo sauce, clean it out, get the lid, it creates that nice seal, you can shake it up. Um, that's how I always make cocktails when I'm camping. So it's a very tried and true method. So let's get mixing. If you're making this a mocktail, the proportions are definitely gonna have to be kind of to your taste, made as you will. Um, one, one thing I often do with um, mocktails is add a little bit of water or a little bit of club soda, because um, that all kind of help you stretch out those ingredients and those flavors so it's not just like a juice bomb in your face. Though if you want a juice bomb in your face, there's nothing wrong with that. Juice bombs are delicious. So first off is our night water rum. We're going to be doing one and a half ounces of that, which is going to be, let's see, I can do this. So one and a half ounces is going to be three tablespoons. <laughs> Next up is that Pompamoose Rose liqueur, which is going to be three quarters of an ounce, which is one and a half tablespoons. The Campari is gonna be half an ounce or one tablespoon. And then the pineapple juice is also going to be three quarters of an ounce or one and a half tablespoons. So just pour everything into your mixing receptacle, whatever it may be. Add some ice. Get that nice seal on there and shake. So what you're trying to do when you shake a cocktail is create a little bit of dilution. Um, but the primary reason that you would shake versus uh, stirring a cocktail um, is to incorporate the ingredients together. If you have an only spirit cocktail or a very spirit forward cocktail, you can stir it because those ingredients will incorporate um, better just from the stir. Whereas with anything with juices, you wanna really shake it so that everything can blend and mix together. And one of the fun things about this drink is that you don't have to strain it. You can just dump it right into your glass. Cheers.